Hi again, everybody. This video is sponsored by contribution from Samantha, and here's her story. Hi, Ollie. This is Samantha. I wanted to try to make a recording about a topic for discussion of, a, of specific narc abuse, but I am not sure how to do just audio, so I made a video. I like the idea of giving your voice a little break, and it is fun to try new things. Like the lady who suggested the idea, the narc wants you to think you don't have options. It feels good to try new things. I hope this is okay. I would look into it more and figure out how to how to just do the audio, but I have court in two days and I'm a little stressed out that about that and it just wouldn't get done. Also, part part way through the video, I get a little louder. I did this because I was talking. I thought about the sound having to go from video to your audience, and I wanted to be sure I was loud enough. I'm nuts. Never mind, sorry, that's why I get louder. I tell a couple stories of narc abuse involving the telephone. Thank you very much for your compassion and attention. I could really use any insight you have about the situations. Thank you again. Much love to you and Shirley and Samantha. Okay, so here we go. And hi everybody um, on Ollie's channel. I was doing my own videos and I thought about some stories about uh, using the telephone. <clears throat> and I thought that would, was a, maybe a common trigger for people who've had narcissistic abuse. I had a couple instances recently with someone living with me who, who had horrible problems and wanted to control me with my telephone. And then it made me remember something from my childhood. And I wanted to share these couple little stories with you. And maybe um, it would help other people remember and process abuse from their childhood. <clears throat> I wanted to make a audio, but I, I'm just making this video real quick. So hopefully nobody sees it but you, Ollie. So um, I had my brother living here with me. And I have a cell phone. And I got him a cell phone. My son-in-law bought it for him. But for some reason, he didn't want to use it right away. He wasn't used to the new technology, and he, he didn't want to activate it right away. I don't know. It's just some weird issue of, yeah, I have a phone, but I can't use it. Without really any explanations. Yeah, okay. My, the I don't know how to do that is to control narcissist. Oh my God, that was my ex-wife. No matter what it was, she didn't know how to use it. Any type of new thing, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And it's just, it, it's the narcissist who wants you to do everything for them. And it's a means of control. It's almost control through perceived helplessness, but they're not helpless. Because I guarantee you, if he needed to use that phone for something he needed, he could sure as hell do it. Whatever. He did have to notify the authorities of the number. And, he, you know, it's not a big deal, though. Just do it. But he was hesitant. So for he had it since last August, and he had it for a couple months before he actually used it. And during that time, um, we found out we had a couple hundred, I mean, a couple thousand dollars each inheritance, all of us children. There's six of us. No issues with that at all in that way. We didn't have problems with that. But um, the insurance company had to call and they had to ask you a bunch of questions. I guess there's something about people doing scams with insurance. So you have to sit there and go through this list of, do you, are you related to anyone in the insurance industry? And are you related to anyone in, I don't know, financial industries, and they ask you all these questions, and then you say, yes, you can set up a temporary bank account in my name, and they'll put the inheritance into that when the insurance company pays it out, and then you can call up and distribute it to whatever accounts you want, but it's going in that account first, and, you know, it took about 20 minutes on the phone with the lady for my thing, but while I'm sitting there talking, my brother's there, and he jumps right in at the end and says, Okay, now I just want to know about, you know, your name sounds familiar, and I think I know you, and I think I know someone who knows you, because he used to live in Pennsylvania, and the insurance company's from Pennsylvania, and the guy happened to know him, whatever, but then he started to ask all about his stuff, and I just sit there, I guess I could have gotten up and walked away, but 
I sat there with you and through all of his stuff using my phone. That's fine, whatever. But then there was another call follow up and there was more questions and things and I didn't want to do that again. So when I was done, I said, okay, thank you very much. And he's in the background kind of going, oh, oh, I had something I wanted to say. And I, and I was, I said, well, you know, they're going to call you next. You know, he's very irate. It's because he doesn't want to take responsibility for any of it. See, if he takes the call, then he's responsible for what he's told and what he says. He needs a scapegoat, you know, in case something, well, you said this and you didn't do that right. And I told you why I had questions about, but he won't do it. And then he said, well, you should have called yourself. He's like, well, you don't know, I don't know how to do that stuff. This is a mess. This will drive you fucking insane. This is what my ex-wife used to do to me about everything because you can't win okay they don't know how to do it okay they don't they they claim not to know how to do it make you do it and as you're doing it for them they're challenging you on what you're doing for them and then when you turn around and say well then you should just do it yourself then you're the asshole because they don't know how to do it and that, that, this is a game this is a game so they don't have to take responsibility for anything, for anything. So everything can be turned around and blamed on you. I just threw the roof angry, like, but I was going to ask a question. And he was right there on the phone. And, and I, I don't I don't really know why it's such a big deal. But it was this horrible Because he kills two birds with one stone. He gets to torture you. Okay? He gets to torture you and play the victim at the same time. And not have to do anything. Deb, you do all the legwork and, ha and and be able to abuse you at the same time. Crime against humanity that I didn't let him talk to my phone conversation, I guess. I don't know. He was mad all day about it. And then just miffed and irritated like, you're so difficult. And why do you have to make everything such a problem? <laughs> That's exactly what I said he was going to do. Why do you got to make it? Then it gets turned around and blamed on you. This is a game. This is a means of control. I'm seeing how emotional you're getting here. This is what he wants. Keep you off balance. That way he always gets his way. Danger is a phone and I gave a phone. He just does use mine and then has to be about it. Whatever. I'm just more direct about it now. I'm learning and this person's moved, moved out. There's things are still behind, but they're... They haven't been here for months, thank God. It's made me remember something that happened in my childhood, and this one brother has a lot of traits similar to my dad. I don't think they're both, either one of them, full-fledged narcissists, but they do click into this behavior in just certain instances, and this thing with, like, rules and stuff. So when I was growing up, you weren't allowed to use the telephone. There was the one phone in the pantry on the wall, you know, the big red phone that hangs up with the long cord, and you were not allowed to use it. We had six kids in my family growing up, and what if it was an emergency? What if it was the doctor? What if it was someone calling that their car broke down? You weren't allowed to use the phone. It was a little bit extreme. I guess it was a lot extreme. But this one time, oh, you were allowed to use the phone if you had to call someone for a ride. You had a, a legitimate reason. You had to call somebody to get your homework that you forgot. You had to call to make an appointment. You had to call a friend and set up a time for them to come pick you up if you needed a ride or set up a time to go visit them at their house. It had to be for like an official reason. You couldn't just pick up the phone and call your friend to chit chat. That was not allowed. Yeah, I mean, I went through the same phone issues in, in, in my house. My, my mother, Drunky, was so obsessive about controlling that phone and who used it because she was on it constantly. It was a constant source of fighting between her and me, Normus. She used to call it the blower. She's on the blower, and this long 50-foot phone cord that used to get stretched everywhere around the house. And then my mother would obsess over the phone bill, like, you know, there was this fight I had when I was, like, 18 with her. It went on for hours over the phone bill because they had paid and they were getting charged for uh, when I first got a pager. 
And after, like, finally, I'm like, you know, it never dawned on me to say, well, how much is, what do you want? I was, I had money. What do you, how many call, how many times, what are you getting charged? Oh, well, it's nine cents every time. Okay. And how many charges are we talking about? Let me see. And she pulls out and she's going through and I'm like, this got it. Like, what? She's like, seven. My five. I mean, Normus, to his credit, there freaked out. Like, he freaked out. I think he threw 75 cents at her and told her to shut the fuck up. It's like, if you ever bring this up again, I will snap your goddamn neck. Oh, three hours. Oh, God. Was this big taboo thing? The grown ups can use the phone, but the kids, you have to have a reason. <clears throat> you didn't have to ask after a certain age if you were a young teenager, young adult, maybe 10, 11, but you had to be responsible about it or you were going to get in trouble. And this one time I called my friend, Kathy Fontan. I didn't get through to her because I just wanted to go to her house and play. <laughs> That's how old I was. I could still play. And I picked up the phone and dialed, and it was the wrong number. So I hung up. I got the phone book out, and I looked it up in our little address book, got the right number, and I dialed it again. And it was busy. So I hung up. <clears throat> I had put the tea kettle on right before I started making the phone call. Then um, I, I dialed again because maybe they hung up and wasn't busy anymore. And while I was, it was ringing, the tea kettle whistled. So I hung up and went to get the tea kettle, turned it off. And I came back to call her again because I knew she would pick up. And I pick up the phone, and here comes my dad from the living room. What are you doing? And I, I said, I'm calling my friend to be able to go to her house and play. And he said, you're allowed to play on the phone or something like that. And I said, I, it's just that. He said, no, you called a lot of times. It was more than just that. I said, no, it was just for the one thing. And I don't really remember completely what happened except... He must have slammed the phone down, grabbed me by my shoulders, turned me around to the dining room, threw me on the floor, on the hardwood floor. I really just did not know why he did that. I mean, I did feel really guilty. I was having fun using the phone. But, you know, I didn't even like talking on the phone because I've had abuse outside my family where they put buzzers and things in your ear and it just triggers me. It's a control thing. It's letting you know you got nowhere to go. You can't even call for help. It's funny because the last video I did about dreams, it's calling. Every time I try to call for help on a phone, it was ne it would never work. Somebody would distract me. And it's funny that this is the next video I do because it has to do with the phone. It's a, it's a means of control. It's all it is. So I didn't really like using the phone. The one time in my life I had fun using the phone. I got thrown on the floor, called a liar, told I was a horrible person, yelled at. Jeez, like, what's the deal with the phone? So The phone is a means of escape. That's what they say it. That's why they control it. It's a link to the outside world. It's a link to their exposure. You can be on that phone telling anybody anything of what's going on in that house and that they will not have. You know, I don't know. The phone is a big deal in my life. I don't even like to talk on the phone even now. Is it? Me either. I hate the phone. I avoid it at all costs. Like I use it now to make to do phone calls for the channel and stuff, but everybody in my personal life knows do not call him on the phone. Do not keep him on the phone. Do not waste his time. Yeah, I have, he has no. I have no patience for it. None. I get just horrible anxiety on the phone. I just don't like it. I don't like it. And anybody who knows me knows that. An adult. If there's too much dead air space, I start to freak out. There's something weird on the other end of the phone. My family told ghost stories, and I thought, oh, the phone's hooked up to a cemetery somewhere because the line is down in a storm. It's ridiculous, I know, but the stuff is so traumatic. The most ridiculous things, they stuck in you. And I fight it. I talk to my daughters on the phone. I talk 
to my daughters on the phone, that's it. And done appointments and things I have to do. That's the only time I use the phone ever. And that's sad. Well, at least I can talk about it, and I'm, I'm getting better about it. But I hope that helps somebody else. It's ridiculous rules and over control. And I, I really don't understand what all's involved in this. It's kind of stupid. A lot of anger for no reason. So if anybody else has issues with the phone, maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. All right. So, yeah, the phone is a trigger. And I think it has not, uh, nothing more than, and nothing else to do with how the narcissist views it. They see it as control. They see it as the means of you communicating. Just like they have to go out and lie and blacklist you and blackball you. and that, They're trying to cut off a means of, of you communicating with the outside world. A means of you exposing them for who and what they really are. And that's why we have so much anxiety over it now. I don't like it. I hate it when the phone rings. I hate it when the phone rings. This has just always been nothing more than anxiety. I remember, you know, drunky would get, you know, into fights daily, multiple times a day, usually with her, with, with her mother, with Virginia. And the beatings and the yelling and the name calling would start because she'd get riled up. And then the phone would ring again, and it would be one of her friends, and it would go right back to normal. And then that goddamn phone cord would be twisted all over the fucking house. But God forbid you reach for the phone. What are you doing? Who are you calling? You don't need to do that. Get off the phone. You're always on the phone. I just want to go play football with my friends. That's what it's about, Samantha. Is just another tool for them to abuse you with because they're afraid of it. They abuse you with it because they're afraid of it because it's a means of escape and exposure and they know it. So thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your story. Thank you everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a narcissist you'd like to expose or a topic you'd like me to cover, you know what to do with my PayPal and the email link in the description box. And remember, when you do email me your story, please put at the top of the email, whether it's with or without contribution, and what name you'd like to go by. This is Ollie Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.